This week's lesson is a coach never compromises absolutes. And out of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, I'll read this for you. It says, uh, the Apostle Paul saying, Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. And uh, I love that word immovable, that we never negotiate the non-negotiables. And, uh, you know, it's a stake in the ground. There's an absolute truth in a day that we keep hearing about many roads to truth. It's not true. The truth is very narrow. Coach, you know, I, I know that if you, if, you, if you are running your team, whatever it is, uh, you have some absolutes. It, it isn't just up for grabs. I mean, that would be like, imagine playing a football game and there's no boundaries. You, know, you can hit guys out of bounds, you can hit guys when the play is over, you can, uh, after you're tackled and the whistle blows, you can get up and keep running, and, and then it's all left up to each other to figure out if that was the right or wrong thing to do. Hogwash, there are rules and regulations. God has set up absolutes that we are called to live by. And it's our assignment and our responsibility to know what they are. There are some negotiables. There's some different levels of, of uh, worship activity that's, you know, we don't all have to worship exactly the same. Romans 14 talks about, you know, some latitude within the kingdom of God that gives one the opportunity to do one thing that wouldn't be right for another. But there are some non-negotiables, and one of those non-negotiables is the resurrection from the dead of Jesus Christ. Because if Christ didn't rise again from the dead, then he's either a dead God <laughs> or he's a liar. He's a farce. But we know him as Lord, who left heaven, came to earth as God the Son, died on a cross for our sins, rose from the dead, ascended back to heaven, sent the Comforter to us, the Holy Spirit, so that we could now have the capacity, those of us who trust and follow Jesus Christ and repent of our sins, we now have the capacity to have Christ's power in us to live out his life. The living Christ, not the dead Christ, but Christ who is alive actually lives through us. And, and with that, there are some non-negotiables. But if you can't accept that truth, if that's not a truth that we can really nail into the ground, then what do we have? What, what, why is it wrong to lie, steal, cheat? Why is it wrong to, 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 to murder? Why, what, who made up these rules? Why is it wrong to use profanity? Who made up these rules? I mean, if it's up for grabs, we treat God sometimes like my daughters used to do when they were little. They take silly putty and they squish, squish, it, squish it around and make a fish and squish the same substance around and make a house and then squish it around one more time and make a cat out of it. Well, sometimes we do that with God. We kind of squish him around and make him who we want him to be. But it isn't the case. And we know that not everybody buys into the absolute truth of Jesus Christ. And yet, you and I, who are followers of Christ, are called to live by those absolute standards. There's a way to, to, to present it. There's love and grace and kindness and gentleness in the way that we present it. We don't force it and slam it down people's throats. But we are absolutely non-negotiable with the truth. We are willing to go to our death for that truth. We are willing to die to our reputations and die to our dreams and goals and objectives. We don't accept bribes from this world to back off of the truth. You would never want to coach your players to do that. You don't negotiate the non-negotiable. I think about the martyrs who went to their death and, and the martyrs today, the 175,000 or so around the world who die uh, over and over again for the Lord Jesus Christ per year. What do they do? Why, what gives them that courage to die? You know what? They died to lots of stuff ahead of their, death, their physical death. That's why. They've died to their reputation. They've died to what other people think about them. They've died to the applause of men and women and this earth. They've died to all of the temptations that are around them. They have said, I am willing to suffer and look like an idiot for the cause of Christ. 
than, than to be considered a renowned person and, and, and take a little bit off the top and negotiate a little bit even, the non-negotiable. It's interesting how Satan tries to tempt us in small ways. You know, he, he doesn't tell us to drop our faith or deny our faith. He says, just ease up a little bit here. Just bend a little bit there. Just open the door a little bit here. In the name of a compassionate mind and a, and a tolerant mind, when we never tolerate evil, we never tolerate negotiating the truth of who Jesus Christ is. We never negotiate the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, made this statement, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. The key word in that verse is the, the way, not a way, but the, the only way is what Jesus was saying. So my question for you, coach, do you believe that? Because if you are rock solid with that, I guarantee you, you'll be a rare gem in this world today. Particularly if you're at a public school and you're coaching. Coach, uh, a lot of the faculty and the teachers and the philosophy of that school is going to be to negotiate the non-negotiable of Scripture. It's going to be, there is no God, there is no right from wrong, or we can negotiate it. And, or there may be even Christian people who are in powerful positions who say, ah, we ought to ease up on that. But what say you, coach? Will you be able to put a stake in the ground? I've got players in, in, uh, on my team that I coach that don't necessarily agree with what I, what I agree with, but my job is to present the truth, firmly stand for the truth, and let the Holy Spirit move in the way it's supposed to move, and let God move those youngsters in the way he wants them to move. But I never compromise the truth because when we start compromising the truth and playing around with the truth and kind of squishing it around, we and ourselves are saying, I now am God. I'll define the rules. God, I'm just kind of moving you aside for a minute and I'm going to take your place for this second or for this moment. And it doesn't work that way. So I'm, I'm challenging you, particularly here in America, where we've negotiated the non-negotiable for you to be a rock a rock in your community of the truth and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, coach, have a great week of absolute truth and never negotiating the non-negotiable.